welcome to a movie talk segment with me, Cody Reed, part of my Movie Reviews channel. For this one, I'm going to be talking about my best and worst movies for 2014. It ended up being a pretty good year for movies. I wasn't really sure what to expect when the year was starting. There were some sequels, some other blockbusters, and other movies, but it ended up being a pretty good year. I don't really like number lists, though. Like, in my opinion, what was my number one movie, what was number two, because, you know, your lists are going to be different anyway, so I'm going to list off just a few worst movies that I had, and several best movies, and that way, if you haven't seen them, you can decide if you want to go see it, you know, based on what I talk about, and uh, feel free to leave a comment on your thoughts, though. I'm going to start off with my worst movies for 2014. I have three in mind. So one of them was The Monuments Men. It was this uh, story in World War II. Uh, with uh, you know a lot of big name actors, including George Clooney, John Goodman, uh, Matt Damon, and some others, and uh, they were you know trying to get back these paintings. And, and I wouldn't even call it a bad movie, but just compared to the other movies I've seen, and counting, I've seen about 35 or so, plus or minus one or two. So this is based out of 35 movies that I saw in theaters. Uh, it was just one of those ones that I didn't really care for. It uh, had kind of like a bland storyline, and uh, it just wasn't as good as I thought it could be. The next one for my worst movies was Noah. Now, it did take some, you know, creative liberties with the story, but, you know, when the marketing, the previews that you see for Noah, they don't show anything about these rock creatures that the director decided to put into the movie that help Noah with that, and it's like, okay, they don't really talk about that in the Bible, and even if you're Christian or not, you know, that really, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't give good favor to the movie, you know. All these people, they see what Noah should be, and then they go in, and the first five minutes of the movie, they start talking about these rock monsters, and it really threw off the rest of the movie for me, and just ended up being, like, kind of like a mess to me, in my opinion. And then lastly, one of the other movies that I thought was, this one was actually just terrible, was Transformers 4, Age of Extinction. It was just a repeat of the other movies, you know, it showed that they would have some Dinobots and maybe spice it up with some new actors, and it kind of looked a little different, but the Dinobots weren't until like the last half hour of the movie, which already it was a super long movie, it had blatant product placement, it had terrible acting, terrible writing. There was one line when uh, the main guy, he was talking to a CIA agent, and I laugh about this all the time, he goes, well, you can't search my place without a warrant, and no joke, the CIA agent goes, my face is my warrant. Like, okay, the, the movie was just overall terrible. Like I talked about the acting, the product placement, the writing, the even the effects weren't like that good. The, it was just a ripoff from the other movies. Do not go see that. A change of pace though. Now we're gonna talk about the best movies for 2014, in my opinion. Uh, I did list five, but I do have a couple honorable mentions. Two that were actually uh, you know, coming out just pretty recently, the past couple months, one of which was Big Hero 6, I really love that movie. Uh, you know, you need to have some kind of, uh, I feel like, animated movie at the top of your list for the year, uh, because it is a good medium for movies, so you have like live action and you have animated. Big Hero 6 was one of the top animated movies for the year to me, it was really funny, had heart and emotion. And uh, the other honorable mention was The Imitation Game, which I just barely saw. Great movie, great story. It had, uh, you know, fantastic writing and acting in the movie, especially from Benedict Cumberbatch. And so those would be two that I really suggest. One, to have this family-friendly movie, and the other, to see this Oscar-worthy type of movie. And then lastly, my top five movies of the year. Again, these aren't in a numbered order. I'm actually just going to put them by when they came out. So the first one, and actually these are all in summer, sorry, but this summer had really high quality movies that were also, you know, they earned a lot of money, they were great, and uh, they really appealed to me. So the first one was Captain America, The Winter Soldier. You have this story that really steps it up from the first one, which I didn't really care for compared to the other first standalone Marvel movies. Captain America, the first Avenger, was okay, but the Winter Soldier stepped it up with its action. The story it was like a spy drama, but also incorporated different aspects for the Marvel Universe and really stepped it up for the rest of the Marvel movies. So I thought it was great. I saw it a couple times in theaters. One that came out after that was X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, this is another comic book movie, but X-Men Days of Future Past really, you know, it got rid of the negatives from some of the previous movies, but it also incorporated both casts. You have the older, experienced cast from the older X-Men movies tying it with the new cast, 
and bringing it together you can really see the relationship and the dynamics between all these different mutants and them trying to you know protect their future and uh, I was just amazed at what they were able to do with the storyline and the movie in general. Next like a month after that was Edge of Tomorrow. Now this movie not a lot of people saw it but you should. I highly recommend it. It should have got a lot more money at the box office and more praise even though it did get a lot of praise but not many people saw it so people weren't talking about it. Because Edge of Tomorrow is basically a sci-fi version of Groundhog Day. This guy gets you know, stuck in this time loop and he has to fight these aliens, but Tom Cruise plays this inexperienced uh, kind of like marketing guy who gets sent into battle so he has to learn how to fight and has to learn how to develop his skills through this time loop and he relives this day over and over. So I highly recommend going and seeing that. It's a different role for Tom Cruise and it's just an overall like, it's really funny too, good action and good comedy. Another sequel that stepped it up from the original was Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Now it had fantastic special effects. I hope that it wins some awards for those because the apes look so realistic. You have the story of these humans and these apes trying to, you know, maybe work together and and trying to live in these different societies. And so it's almost like comparing different cultures, you know, of humans, but just one of them has to happens to be apes. And the story was fantastic. I mean, like I mentioned, like it looked great, but the the story was there. The heart was there. And that's one that I definitely recommend that others would see as well if they haven't seen it already. And then lastly, Guardians of the Galaxy, the top box office movie in the U.S. this year, and it had high reviews. It was this new Marvel movie, these different characters that people didn't know about, kind of like a ragtag uh, team of uh, underdog Avengers, basically. And you have this, uh, you know, human, uh, Chris Pratt plays him, you know, Peter Quill, as well as a few different aliens and uh, then these animated characters Rocket and Groot and they come together to fight against this villain in the galaxy trying to take over this other planet and uh, the humor was there it was hilarious it had you know like I mentioned heart a lot of these movies had heart too which is something that I like to see in blockbusters you have fantastic characters you have great heart you have great humor humor not human humor and so I would recommend that as well if you haven't seen it maybe give it a chance I mean it might not be for everyone there are some people that didn't like it but overall, I thought it was a really unique movie. So yeah, that was my list. What were your thoughts on it? Like I mentioned, leave a comment if you had some ideas and uh, what your favorite movies were. And then also visit my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash movie reviews, and you can see the other movie talk segments I've done, as well as the other reviews I've had some recently for Into the Woods and The Imitation Game. Thanks so much for watching, and happy viewing.